Welcome to How to Sell on eBay, the full step-by-step -step beginner's guide where I take you guys hand in hand as we create a successful eBay dropshipping business without worrying about account suspensions, eBay flagging accounts and decreasing our sales and visibility, and eBay's selling limits which limits us from expanding and scaling right from the start. I'm going to be going over all of this and so much more tips and secrets inside, so watch this quick intro and let's go. Hello everyone, my name is Liwan from AutoDS. I'm the content manager and I've also been dropshipping for the last several years. And in this video, I'm going to take you guys hand in hand as we create a successful eBay dropshipping store together and start making sales even from day one. For those of you who don't know the dropshipping business model, it's been around for a while, it's not going anywhere, and one of the best things about getting started on eBay is that there are no upfront costs at all. You can start creating your business with zero expenses. This means that all that's left to do is to acquire the right amount of knowledge because if you don't learn the right way and you don't learn from other people's mistakes and you don't take the right steps to creating your store, so that you can avoid getting account suspensions and even if you do get a temporary suspension you'll know exactly what you need to do to get over it and other problems like eBay flagging accounts decreasing all of the traffic that you're getting to your listings and decreasing your sales and on top of that eBay selling limit that's one of the hardest challenges to get over when you're starting a new eBay seller account now keep in mind guys this video is over an hour and a half long so You've got the timestamps below this video. Don't watch it all in one session. It's a lot of information to gather at once. Take sessions, take breaks. Make sure to have a cup of coffee before starting this video and use the timestamps to always continue where you left off. Now, let's start from the beginning. So we know that dropshipping is a business model that allows us to fulfill orders and have an online store without paying for your inventory upfront. This means that you can simply choose a supplier, import products that that supplier is holding in, in his inventory, sell it on your store for a higher price, and your profit is the difference between your supplier's price and the price that you have on your eBay store. This business model has been working for years and it's definitely not going to go anywhere. And for those of you who don't know about eBay, so eBay has been around for a long time and everything that I'm going over, by the way, guys, right under this video, I'll leave a link to the blog so you guys can also read about all of this. And once again, guys, one second before I go on, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video if you appreciate the content so that you'll always stay updated on all of the latest and all of the hottest topics that we have coming out in the world of e-commerce and dropshipping. Now let's get back to the subject. So eBay's been around for a while. It started as an auction-based platform, but in time, people started selling also in buy it now prices. It usually started as garage sales and just selling products that you have laying around your home and quickly turned into a huge marketplace for retailers and dropshippers alike. And that is how eBay makes most of its profit from its online retailers and its dropshippers, two business models that are making them a whole Whole lot of cash so we know that the dropshipping business model means that we're selling products that we have on other suppliers websites we're selling them on our stores and as soon as we make a sale we simply go to our suppliers website purchase the product and ship it directly to our customer there's a few ways of doing that and we're going to talk about all of these things along with product research how to sign up and how to even start selling on eBay marketing methods order fulfillment customer service Product research, of course, is one of the most important things that we're going to touch here because at the end of the day, if you're not selling a product that someone is willing to buy, then you're not going to make any sales no matter how beautiful your store is. So we're going to be touching up all of these things starting right now. Also keep in mind that you have different regions that you can sell on. You don't only have to sell on eBay US. Now, of course, eBay US, holds the US market, which is one of the biggest markets when it comes to demand and how much they buy. But you have other marketplaces like eBay UK, eBay Canada, eBay Australia. These marketplaces, I wouldn't call them untapped marketplaces, but compared to the US, it's completely untapped. 
and you can make so much profit also drop shipping on there so keep that in mind as we move forward when you create your ebay account you can create it on any of the marketplaces that i just talked about so how do we actually start selling on ebay for the first time and what are we going to go over in this video step by step of course i'm going to be adding more bonus lessons inside this video but mainly we're going to go over how to sign up for ebay how to list your first item manually how to conduct the right product research, selecting the right dropshipping suppliers, learning to calculate your profits the right way. And this is something really important because many people think that they're making sales, they're making profit, but they have low profit margins like 5, 10, 15%. And then they wonder why they're not withdrawing any money to their bank account. Then we're going to learn how to import our first product on our store. Moving on to fulfilling our orders and handling customer service. Now, once again, guys, I'm going to be giving secret tips inside this video, like unflagging your eBay account, unsuspending your account when you get those temporary suspensions, and how to raise your eBay selling limits. One of the biggest problems that beginner dropshippers have and I'm going to solve this problem for you. So let's start from step number one. In order to start selling on eBay, the first thing that you want to do if you haven't done so yet is sign up for eBay. So this one should go without saying, but what you want to do is simply head over to ebay.com and register for your account. Now you can also head to ebay.ca if you want to sell to the Canadian marketplace ebay.co.uk for the uk marketplace or ebay.com.au if you would like to sell to the australian ebay marketplace now these are my top four ebay marketplaces for selling on today and if you do test out each marketplace you will see that one will work definitely better than others when it comes to a certain category or niche or product line. So the more you test, the more success you will find. So create an account on either one of these platforms. In this case, I'll stay on ebay.com for the US audience and I'll click on register. Next, you have to start filling in your information like your name, your email, your desired password, your address, and also your billing information. Now, this is for eBay's payment system. If you live in the United States, eBay is going to hook up to your bank account and simply send your funds to your bank account once you get them from your buyers. So for example, you list an item on eBay, you make a sale, the buyer pays eBay, eBay puts those funds on the side and releases it to your bank account within a couple of days. Now, if you do not live in the United States, then you are most likely going to hook up to Payoneer. That's what eBay is going to ask you to do. And with that, Payoneer is going to be the middleman between eBay and your personal bank account. So eBay will be sending the funds from the customers who are buying from you. Those funds are going to be sent from eBay to Payoneer and from Payoneer to your personal bank account. If you guys need any help with how to hook up to Payoneer, I'll leave a link right below this video to a video on how to hook up your account to Payoneer and successfully synchronize between those two platforms. So that's regarding the payment information. Once you have all of that set up, eBay is also gonna ask you if you wanna create a personal account or a business account. Now, if you are an established business, then of course you're going to go for a business account. If you do not have a business established yet, simply create a personal account. There won't be any differences in the fees that you're paying and all of that. Only later on when you wanna start seeing insights and invoices and things like that, it's going to be much easier with a business account, but you can always transition from a personal account to a business account by simply reaching out to eBay. So start with an individual account. There's absolutely no problem with that. Once your account is up and running, the next step is to list your first item manually. And when I say manually, I simply mean on clicking on the sell link on eBay, which looks like this. Right up here, you'll have the button to sell. So I'm going to click on that. Then we're clicking on list an item. And here eBay is asking us, tell us what you're selling. So my first tip for you guys, the first items that you list should be real items that you have laying around the house. Now, why do you ask? That's because the first products that you guys import to your store, eBay is going to look at it with a magnifying glass and see exactly what type of seller you are. And if they see right from the start that you are selling products 
real products, not products that you have laying around the house, but let's say retail products or products from wholesale suppliers or anything like that, they'll see that you are some type of business and they will shut down your account only temporarily to get you on the phone or on eBay chat and try to get more information from your business. And it could also happen when you're uploading products from home. So if you do get, get a temporary suspension, it'll be much easier to waive that suspension and even get more eBay selling limits if they see that you are trying to sell all kinds of products that you have laying around the house and they have no problem with that you don't have to have so much experience in order to do that but if they do see that you are some kind of small business and you already have products that are selling and you also want to make it on their platform they're going to want to get some more information like who your suppliers are so in this case you can give them a wholesale suppliers like cj dropshipping china brands and so forth and tell them that you are dropshipping with wholesale suppliers and with private suppliers and that you have contracts and everything so either way my suggestion first is to upload products that you have laying around the house it will make your start so much easier so here for example let's say i have a dog collar around my house so i'm going to tell ebay that i want to sell a dog collar then here they're asking me if i can be more specific so what kind of a dog collar is it what material is it made of or what type of dog is it for so i'm going to go with dog collar leather for example so let's say once again that i have this product laying around my house so i went with dog collar leather then i'm going to click on the search icon and here ebay is asking me for more item specifications like the dog breed the dog size features that it has and so forth what ebay is trying to do here is see if this product is already listed on their marketplace and if it is then they'll add it to their own type of buy box but if it isn't then they're going to create a new listing for you so here let's just say that i filled in everything and i clicked on view possible matches now it's asking me if the condition is new or used so of course we're only selling new products even if you have it laying around the house it'll be much easier this way now i need to sign in to continue filling this in all right and now that i'm signed in i can continue here are the most important parts to remember when listing your first item so first you've got the items title and this is one of the most important things to get down correctly use as much information as you have from the product that you are selling and add it to your your title use as much characters as you can from the limit that ebay gives you okay if i'm not mistaken it's 80 character limit use as much of them as possible because the closer you are to writing what the buyer is writing the higher the chances that he will see your listing and not your competitors the next thing that you want to do skip the subtitle you want to you don't want to pay money for that you don't have to have a custom la label sku choose the proper category for this product so ebay already knows to put it inside dog supplies and collars then you have store categories but it's a new store so you don't have any categories yet you are testing out a whole bunch of products on ebay and i definitely recommend to always start with a general store especially on ebay test out a whole bunch of products and see what starts to sell and then scale your success by adding more products that are similar to those that are selling for you while always testing out new products don't go for a one product store on ebay and don't go for a certain specific niche right from the start because you don't know what you're missing out in other categories and on ebay most of your buyers are not going to go to your store and see what other products you are selling it's more one-time buys so they search for something they see that you're selling it they go inside the listing add it to their cart and they buy it without thinking too much from there so moving on upc add that if you have it from your supplier's information if you're using product importing which we'll talk about soon you don't need to worry about the upc it's being filled in for you the condition once again is new here you're going to add photos from your product so it's a it's a real product from home take some pictures and add it right here next you got your item specific so if there is a certain brand write the brand's name if it's unbranded simply use unbranded then you have the item specifications so fill in as much as you can and ebay is giving you a hint here how many people are searching for this item specification and that way you'll understand that it'll help you rank better and get more traffic to your product if you fill in these item specifications now if there's an item spec where you don't have the answer to then do not guess you don't want to be wrong on the item specifications because then buyers can open item is not as described cases and you will probably end up losing those if the information you're providing is not correct so make sure that everything here is specific and exact and you can always add more specifics if you have them next you have the products description so here you want to fill in all of the products description like specialized dog collar collar brown 
material, leather, for happy dogs, etc., etc. So write down your product's description. Then in the format, you wanna choose fixed price. We don't wanna go for auction style listings. It costs money just to list them. And soon we're going to also talk about uh, eBay selling limits and costs, subscriptions, fees that we're paying, and more. Then you've got your buy it now price. By the way, we're going to leave this on start my listings when I submit them. So once I submit my listing, I want it to go live. I don't want to schedule it for a later date. You can also schedule it for a later date if you want. And what you do want to do if you are scheduling is make sure that you're scheduling it at a certain time when your target audience usually wake up in the morning. If let's say I'm an international seller and I'm selling to the US audience and I wanna make it so that my listings will be in front of my audiences as soon as they wake up, remember that eBay will give you much, much higher visibility in the first few hours when your listing is up and active as soon as you list it. So as soon as you list it, there's a window of a few hours that eBay is giving you much better visibility. So you wanna take advantage of that time, you wanna take advantage of that visibility and make sure that your target audience sees it as soon as they wake up in the morning. So for example, if I know that I wanna list it, I'm selling to eBay US, and I want them to see it at around 9 a.m. in the morning, then I have to time it. Let's say my 8 p.m. is there 9 a.m. So I have to schedule my listings to upload at 9 p.m. or 8 p.m. my time so that they'll see it at 9 or 10 a.m. their time when they wake up. So make sure that you are scheduling your products to upload when your target audience usually wake up in the morning. Then you've got your item quantity, so we'll leave this at one. Click on private listing, allow buyers to remain anonymous to other eBay users. It'll simply make your competitors' lives a little bit harder in trying to find out the source of where you're getting your products from. Then you wanna continue scrolling down. Here we've got the business policies. Now the business policies includes our shipping policy, our payment policy, and our return policies. Our buyers need to know what our policies are when it comes to these three things and at this point we are creating our own first policies so the policies really depends on what your supplier can offer you if your supplier can ship out your products within one to two days then you can choose fast shipping times and if they ship out slower then you'll have to use other business policies that take longer to reach the buyer so that the buyer will always know what to expect when and before buying from your store let me show you how to create eBay business policies. Here in the payment policy, I'm going to click on create. Now there are other methods of creating your business policies, but it's always easy to create it when you're listing your first item. Then that policy gets saved and you can use it for other listings when you start to list them. And of course, you'll have a link to your business policy so you can get there easily from your seller dashboard and continue creating or adjusting your policies from there. So here we're going to create a new payment policy. We'll call it payment policy managed okay let's say i want to go with managed payments here you can leave a description if you want and here i'm going to check in require immediate payment when your buyer uses buy it now this means that when a buyer says that he wants to buy an item from your store he really has to buy it and he can't just claim to buy it and then you have to wait to get his payment in order to ship it out it just makes things a little bit harder more challenging so we want to require an immediate payment when the buyer uses uses buy it now and as you can see here it says payments managed by ebay so this means that i'm using ebay's managed payment system and soon i'll show you all of the fees that you have to pay when you're using the managed payment system when you're not using the managed payment system and once again we're going to talk about all of the fees and subscriptions later on so don't worry about that so here once again i'm going with the managed payment system if you have other choices like paypal and you want to use that go ahead then i'm going to click on save and close and then I'll have a policy, a payment policy, that tells the buyer that they can use eBay's managed payment system, which means they can pay with PayPal, credit card, whatever's comfortable for them. And eBay will simply send you your funds using Payoneer or using your bank account, whatever, what we talked about earlier, whatever method you went with. So that's the payment policy. Now let's go with the shipping policy. I'm going to click here on create. And here we're creating a shipping policy for this product. So. For example, I'm going to call this USA Shipping, and then I'll put all of my products here that are coming from USA suppliers that can offer this shipping policy with these times. So here I'm going with domestic shipping. I created an account on eBay US. So domestic shipping here means shipping to the US. I'm going to leave it on flat, same cost to all buyers. And in services, we're going to choose whatever fits this product that I'm getting from this certain supplier. So right now I'm uploading a product from home, 
But in other cases, let's say I'm going to already start drop shipping and I want to use whatever options that supplier can offer me. So for example, if I'm using Amazon Prime and I know that the product is going to ship out within a couple of days, then here I can go with expedited services and I can choose expedited shipping one to three business days. This means that once the product is shipped, it'll take one to three business days to reach the buyer. But how long does it take to ship? We'll get to that in a second. The cost here will be free and I'm going to offer free shipping. The reason that I'm doing this, even if my supplier charges me for shipping, I want to include that inside my source price, inside my product price and always offer free shipping to my buyers. It will make your listing stand out more than your competitors who are actually taking money for shipping. Then you have your handling time. Your handling time is how long it takes you to provide a tracking number once a buyer purchases from your store. So once again, I'm going to stick with the Amazon Prime example. I know that Amazon is going to ship my product within a couple of days at the most. So at the most, I'll have two business days as my handling time. But just to be sure to stay on the safe side, I see that three business days is also good. And as you see here, it says, excessive not typical for four business days and up so with amazon prime for example or even other suppliers but this is the example i'll be using for this video you know that your products are going to ship out within three business days and that is enough so handling time is how long it takes me to provide a tracking number and services is how long it takes to reach my buyer after the tracking has been provided. So here we've got three business days plus three business days. That is six business days and it's more than enough for most suppliers drop shipping from the US to the US market. Next, you have your shipping rate tables. So we don't have international shipping, so we're not going to use it. And you've got your exclude shipping locations. Here you wanna edit the exclusion list and make sure that every country is excluded except of course for the United States, which you are shipping to. So this is just going to make sure that you're not enabling international shipping. And once you have about 400 listings and up, you can definitely do it with services like HipShipper. We have a video on that and a full integration with them, which doesn't cost you any money at all to so synchronize your listings with HipShipper and they'll enable worldwide shipping for your eBay store using their platform. More about that on our hip shipper video. So for now, we're going without international shipping and we're going to click on save and close. Then we'll have this new policy called USA shipping. Now, if you wanna ship from outside the US, for example, if you wanna drop ship from China to the USA or China to the UK, or wherever you are selling, then you are simply going to choose the services. So instead of expedited shipping from within the USA, we're going to go with standard services from abroad. And here you wanna choose the business days, which reflects how long it takes to actually reach the buyer. So for example, you have standard shipping from outside the US, five to 10 business days. But for China, it usually takes longer. Like this one, for example, standard shipping from greater China to worldwide, seven to 19 business days makes a lot more sense or you also have economy shipping from greater China to worldwide, 11 to 35 business days. This is if you really wanna stay safe and also make sure that you are shipping from sellers with high ratings so that you won't have a problem with the shipping time. Now remember guys, the policy is really important. You don't wanna have late shipping and you also always want to make sure that you're always answering your customers and taking care of any open cases because you do not want bad seller metrics on your eBay account once your seller metrics start to decrease and go low, you will find yourself outside of the game in no time, but there is no reason for that to happen if you take every step in this video and you really learn the right way how to start your eBay dropshipping business, which is exactly why I'm doing this video for you guys. So take care of your business, take care of your buyers. This is the number one thing apart from product research, which we will get to soon. So that is your shipping policy. Finally, you have the return policy. So here I'm going to create a new return policy. Call it return policy. And here what you wanna do is let the buyer know what your return options are. So here we're going to click in domestic returns accepted and make sure you're always offering to the buyer whatever your supplier can offer for you. So I'm gonna stick with my example with Amazon Prime here. So I know that Amazon is giving me free domestic returns and they usually give it up to 30 days. So after receiving the item, your buyer should contact you within 30 days. I'm gonna leave that there. And return shipping will be paid by the seller, which means you are giving free returns. eBay obviously likes this, and they're going to give you better placement for your listings and also offer a replacement or exchange if available because your supplier can offer the same, if they can offer the same. Next, we're not going to click on international returns accepted at this point, and that's pretty much it. That is your return policy. You're saying that 
all of the buyers can return their product within 30 days and the return shipping will be paid by the seller. Now once again if you're drop shipping from China or from abroad and the seller is not giving you free returns or even domestically if you find a supplier that doesn't give you free returns then you want to change this to return shipping will be paid by the buyer just take into consideration that eBay will demote your listing when compared to other sellers who are giving free returns on that same particular product or similar products to the one that you are selling. So that's it regarding eBay's business policies. Make sure that you are giving your buyers whatever your suppliers offer you. Then we've got the package weight and dimensions. So fill in the right dimensions for the product that you're selling from home. Then you've got your custom weight, so how much the product weighs, and the item's location. Make sure that the item location is your actual item location. So if someone actually buys this product and you provide a shipping number, those shipping details should have the same item location that we are seeing here, which is the zip code and the state that the product is being shipped out of. And of course, if someone buys one of your sample products that you uploaded to eBay, you will have to ship it out to them. So make sure that you're setting the correct price so that you won't be losing money on an order if you happen to get it. Next, you can promote your listing using volume pricing. But in this case, since we're only adding the quantity of one, there is no volume pricing here. Then you can preview your product to see how it came out or click on list item and it will be listed on your eBay store. The manual way, as you can see, takes a lot of time because you have to go through each line one by one, fill it in, and when you start drop shipping, it's gonna take you so long to do this and be able to scale when you're taking all the information and passing it one by one from your supplier's website to your eBay store, you'll simply find yourself spending all day doing this and we have a perfect solution to that using automation, I will show you that soon. The next step is to list all of the products that you have from home in order to fill up your first starting seller limit. So if for example, eBay started you off with a limit of five products to sell, then you should upload five products that you have from home. If they gave you 10 products, do the same, upload 10 products from home. After you upload those products, the following day, simply call eBay or open up a chat window with them and let them know that you've exceeded your selling limits and that you have so many more things to sell around your house. If they could please upgrade your limits so that you can have more products to sell. If they ask you how much, let them know that they, you want as many as possible. If they can give you a hundred, if they can give you a thousand, it'll even be better because you simply have so many products that you need to sell and they shouldn't have a, any problem doing that they'll go through your listing they'll see that you're listing your products from home and they will upgrade your limits once they do that you can start automating your dropshipping business start adding products using automation and this is exactly how we're going to do that first you want to choose what product you want to sell so this is where product research comes into play let's start talking about product research now remember this is what your store is all about if you're giving good customer service the next thing that you need to worry about is handling your product research and doing it the right way. There are so many ways to do product research and there is not so many wrong ways and right ways to do it, but the more you do it, the more experience that you have in it, the more success you'll find in it. And these are my best practices for conducting product research and really finding the best products to sell. So my first tip here is to use something new that we just added to the AutoDS system. And this is simply a product database with all of the best products, most trending products that you can start selling on your stores. And this is exactly how it's done. Here on the AutoDS platform, I'm going to click on these dots here on the top left. And from platform, I'm going to switch to product research. Now, as you can see, it's connecting me to the AutoDS marketplace. Now, this feature doesn't cost me any money. It's included with my AutoDS account. And this is exactly how that is done. So here I have a whole bunch of products, as you can see, that is trending, it's hot selling, and I can play around with different categories, different filters, and find products to sell. Right now you can see that I'm standing on all products. But if I click on popular products, here I'm going to see all of the hot trending items that, are, that have been selling recently. I can also click on new products to see what products of them are new. And here I have all kinds of filters that I can play with. So right now in the popular products, I'm seeing all of the products that have a rating that's greater than 4.5 and that have more than hundred reviews, which means more than enough people have been buying this and reviewing it with above a 4.5 average, which means that these are high quality products that are also trending. Then I can add more filters like what warehouses I want the products to ship from what suppliers I want to use to grab these products from, the item cost, the retail price, what category I want to drop ship from, 
So here, for example, you have pretty much every category that you can think of that fits a dropshipping business model and simply choose what category you want to try. And you can also filter from UPC, from how long it takes to ship out the item, or when it was last updated on the system. Now, for those of you who don't know, AutoDS is simply a platform to help automate your dropshipping business and you really need this in order to scale your store and start hitting it to new numbers, really high numbers that you probably never thought before was possible, but with business automation, and when I say automation, I mean things like price and stock monitoring. So every time the price changes on your supplier's website, AutoDS will also change the price on your eBay store. Same thing for the stock status. So if the supplier goes out of stock, the system will also take the product out of stock on your store. And you'll also have automatic product importing. So you saw how long it took me to upload a product manually from eBay. But if I do it with automatic importing, which I'll show you in a second, it'll simply reach a store just like that, no time wasted, and you can save your time and invest it in continuing to growing and expanding your dropshipping business. So let's see what other options we have here. Like I said, we have new products to so see what new products just hit this database. And we're always updating this database all the time with trending products. And soon we're also going to add a whole bunch of wholesale dropshipping suppliers. So for any of you who wanna work with wholesale suppliers, you'll have that solution soon. And you've also got holiday products. So these are all of the seasonal products that are trending. Right now, we're nearing the end of November. We've got Christmas coming up. So as you can see here, we've already got these Christmas products. And we'll always adjust this category to always be updated on whatever holiday you have coming up next. So you guys will not miss out on any holidays. And of course, you can use the search feature. So for example, now I wanna add products from Christmas. So I just searched for Christmas and here are all of the Christmas products that we have. Now, once you sign up to AutoDS and start your free trial for just $1, use the link below this video, try it out, see that it works for you. I'm sure that you will love it. The first thing that you wanna do on AutoDS is actually add your eBay store. So here you'll be prompted to do that as soon as you sign up for AutoDS. You'll add your first eBay store through here and of course do that after you created your eBay account, after you upgraded your limits so that your journey will be much smoother from that point. And once you connect your eBay store, all you have to do is simply start importing products. So we went to the product research feature. So let's say here, I wanna import this Christmas Santa Claus statue to my store. One thing that I can see here is that this product, this specific product is coming from Amazon. This is the product's title. It costs $30 on Amazon and they ship it out within two business days. Now, the best part about this is that I can also automate my order as soon as it comes in, but we'll get to that soon. Let's click on the product and see what information we have inside. Now, if you're asking yourself, wait, if I can see this product on the product research feature, then thousands of other dropshippers are also gonna see it. On the one hand, you are right. But on the other hand, don't forget what I mentioned in the beginning of this video. You have so many different regions that you can sell on. Nobody's telling you that you have to sell on eBay US. You can also try UK, Canada, Australia, Germany, and even more. Now, not only that, you can completely optimize your product. So if you optimize your product's title and you optimize the product's image and you optimize the product's description, you won't look like other sellers. So you can definitely sell at a different price profit more and still make those sales. So I clicked on a product and here we have more product information like the product's info here. We've got the product specifications. We've got the product's policies. So the return window and who needs to pay for the return. And we've got the product reviews. Now, if we scroll down, you can see more products that are similar to this one. So if this product sold for you, for example, then you should add all of these products too because these statues, these, these Christmas statues are probably really hot selling right now since you got them from the product research database, they sold for you. So now you wanna add as many of those products that are similar to the one that sold for you while always testing out more products. So that's one quick thing regarding product research. Now let's say that this is a product that you wanna to import to your store. So once again, I'm going to search for Christmas. I'm gonna hover over this statue and I'm going to click here on import product. Now, depending on whatever stores I have here, it's going to import to those stores. So I can simply click on that and I can select one store or multiple stores and it will import to them. So now, as you can see, the status switch to view in drafts. So I'm going to click on that and this will simply take me to the draft section of my AutoDS account where I can start optimizing this Christmas statue. Another way to do it manually is by heading out of the product research and heading back into the AutoDS platform. So by clicking on these dots here and clicking on platform 
and that will take me back to the AutoDS platform and I can simply from there click on drafts and here I am. So this is the product, this is the Christmas statue and here I can start optimizing it. So the first thing that I will do is start optimizing the title. As you can see we have up to 80 characters. So we'll begin by deleting all those letters that we had there in the end, deleting all of the commas and start adding in more keywords that can really fit this product. Like here, for example, Christmas Santa with bag poly resin, figurine holiday, holiday is repeating itself twice, so we definitely don't need that, we'll delete one, figurines, and let's add more words because I see that I still have 18 characters left, I use 62 out of 80, so I'll also add the word statue and decoration. And if you're looking for what words you wanna add, you can simply cl click here on the supplier's source URL. So in this example, we know it's coming from Amazon. And if I'll click on the ASIN or the product URL, it will simply take you to the product page where we're getting this item from, and you can grab more information from that product and add it to the product title. Just make sure that all of the words here are relevant. It's explaining what the product is, and try to add keywords that you think people are going to search for when they search for this specific product. Next, we have the category. So as you can see here, it was selected for us automatically inside holiday seasonal figurines. So we didn't need to do much there. Then we have automatic tags that the system is helping us with. So you can use these tags later on to see what tags are selling well for you and add more products from that line. So we've got all the tags, you can add more, you can remove, you can do whatever you want. Then you've got the shipping methods. So here we're gonna choose with the fastest shipping method with tracking available. And we've got the business policies. So we already set our business policies and AutoDS knows what policies we have and we can choose them from here. So you can choose your payment policies, shipping policies and return policies. We went over all three of them and how to create them. And here you can simply choose what policies are right for this product. Then you've got the country location, which in this case it's coming from the United States. And make sure that you're not making any mistakes on your country location because this will give eBay a reason to flag your eBay account for breaching their item location policy and saying, hey, you're saying that you're sending out this product from this zip code from this country, but we actually saw it coming from a different zip code or even worse, a different country. So don't get stuck up in that. eBay will not like it. And if you're shipping from a different country, you could get in real trouble. eBay can suspend your account. But if you're shipping from a different zip code, if let's say the country location is correct, but eBay is checking out your tracking information that you're uploading after you make a sale. And if they see that the tracking information doesn't originate from this zip code, then your account will get flagged. On the one hand, you won't get suspended, but it will increase your traffic and sales, and you'll have to make up for it by adding so many more listings after that. But one way to overcome it is using Aquiline's tracking conversions. I will talk about that real soon, and that is the solution to one, unflag your eBay account, and two, get a top-rated seller on eBay. So use any zip code. For example, if you're shipping from the United States, then use any zip code from the United States, and later on, I'll show you how that plays out later. Then we've got the stock monitoring, price monitoring, and automatic orders. I'm going to leave all of them on. We already talked about price and stock monitoring when using AutoDS, and soon I'll also talk about automatic orders. Then you've got the product's description. So here Here's all of the information that AutoDS was able to obtain from the product page if you click on this URL here. So you can easily add more information if you have it or leave it as it is. Then in the variants, you have the variant specifications. So in this case, the variant is on hold because there's only two left. There's only a quantity of two left on the supplier's site. And we have a setting of a, a minimum of three products inside my settings. So if I click here on settings, store settings, lister, and in the general, I have a minimum product quantity of three. So this means that I'm telling the system, hey, every time the supplier has three units or below, take the item out of stock on my store because I don't want people to buy it if the supplier doesn't really have it. So here you can hover over the reason that it's on hold and see why it's on hold because we have a set quantity of three that we want the supplier to have. And in this case, he only has two left. Once the supplier has three, four or more, AutoDS will bring it back to stock. So here we can edit the variance information. For example, how much profit we wanna have how, in percentages, in fixed dollar amounts, 
the total number of fees that we're paying and I'm going to get to that soon and the selling price, how much you want to sell it for, how much profit you'll make once you sell this product. And if we want some type of pricing automation to increase the price every time it sells and decrease every time it doesn't sell so that we can find the sweet spot of where we can sell the most and profit the most. Include the shipping price inside the product's price. Round cents to 99, which simply looks better. And allow marketplace sellers if you want to buy products that are also not prime. In this case, I will uncheck that and I will save it. Then you have your product's images. So here you can rearrange the images by simply dragging it to a different section and that way and it'll show in that order on the products page you can also open up the item editor by clicking on edit and here you can do a whole bunch of things like adding watermark adding text and many other things you can get more information on that on our youtube channel so this is the products images and the item specifications you want to add in as many specifications as possible you can also use the recommended item specifications here to get more specifications as long as you have the right information from the product make sure that you have it down in the item specifications that's it once you're done you're going to click on save and import and it will simply import to your store or you can schedule it like i said to have it upload at a certain time and date so that that way you can get the most amount of views but that's how easy it is to go through all of the product import process through auto ds which makes everything so much better and saves so much more time along the way and that is how we're actually conducting product research using the product research feature that we have inside auto ds now of course course there are other ways to conduct product research and we've got all of them on our blog page and on our youtube channel just check out our sell these now playlist and there you'll see all of the hot and trending products that you guys need to add to your store we do it on a monthly basis always updating you guys with all of the new trending products that are coming out in the world of drop shipping so you guys will always stay ahead of your competition but let's talk about a few more ways of conducting product research one of my personal favorites if you're not going to use this internal system for importing products because here we really did all of the homework for you guys there are other ways of doing it like simply heading to your supplier's website and seeing what's trending there and also checking to see if it's selling on your ebay marketplace so for example i can simply go to amazon then clicking on best sellers on your supplier's website so here for example it's amazon most suppliers usually have best sellers here go inside a category that's fit for the dropshipping business model and if you guys need help on that once again use the blog right below this video over there you have all of the best categories to dropship from i'm gonna go with one of my favorites home and kitchen and let's go with storage and organization so here i can see a whole bunch of products in there and let's micro niche that one more time clothing and clothes clothing and closet storage. So you guys need to dive deep down into the sub 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 category and then simply choose something and see if it sells well. So on the one hand, you see all of these reviews, you know that these products are selling well. You can definitely try to resell them. Once again, optimize the title, optimize the images a little bit, differentiate yourself from the competition and you will make those sales. But you can also check to see if it's selling on your marketplace by simply taking the product's title and pasting it on your marketplace. So for example, let's take this product here. Let's take the product's title let's say the first two lines or line and a half should be enough for eBay. So I'm just going to highlight all of this. This is the product. Copy the title and paste it on eBay. Make sure that the ship to corresponds to the country that you actually want to check. So I want to test the market in the US. So I'm going to ship to the US and I just search for this exact product. So here you can see that I found the same exact product that I just searched for on Amazon, here on eBay, selling for $19.69 and other colored variations for even a couple dollars more. So I know that these sellers are dropshipping from Amazon and this was just the first example that I searched up. If you guys will search up your examples, you will see so many more of these specific examples where someone is taking a product from one place, selling it for more expensive on their marketplace. So you can see here that we already have those colors, the, the white and the black. And there's also more variations like brown and gray that I see that other sellers did not upload yet. Here we've got the gray. Where's the brown? No one has that one yet. And I can see that some people are already selling this product. How can I see that? What you want to do here on the left side is click on sold items. But you'll also see that completed items will fill in. So we want to unfill that because otherwise it will show us all of the out of stock items that sold. So here I'm going to click on sold items. You can see that completed was also filled in. So I know this trick. I'm going to scroll back down. 
Click on completed once again to unclick it and keep only the sold items clicked in. So now it's showing me all the items that sold that are still in stock. So here this seller, we know that he's buying it for $13.58. You can even add 10% tax. So let's say 14, 14 and a half dollars, but he's selling it for $26.38. So he's making the profit minus the eBay fees, which I will get to in a second. But this is how you can tell. And this product, by the way, sold on October 26th. This one sold on November 24th. This guy sold on November 17th. And this one sold on October 23rd. So only this variation is selling. You can definitely try the other colors and try to sell them too. But this is just one quick example of how to get a product and see if it's selling on your marketplace and see if you also have potential to say sell this specific product so in this case i would say yes upload each and every one of these variations even a standalone listings with our own titles and that way you can start testing to see what sells and what works so let's say you wanted to import this product from your store and you didn't get it from the product research feature that we have in AutoDS. so what we're going to do here is download and install an extension called the AutoDS helper which is absolutely free and this will help you import your products really quickly from your supplier's website to your dropshipping store. So once again, search for AutoDS Helper on Google, add this extension to your Chrome, and once it's installed, simply head back to your supplier's website. In this case, we see here it's Amazon, and we can simply copy the URL up here, head back to the AutoDS platform, click up here on add products, and click on single product. Choose what store you wanna import it to, and enter the URL. So here I'm going to paste it. So here I pasted the URL, the supplier source and the region where I got this product from. Then I'm going to click on edit now quick. And in just a couple of seconds, it opened up the drafts page for this product so we can start the optimization process, which I just showed you. One more quick way, if you wanna grab a whole bunch of products, once you found an item that's selling really well for you, you can do it really easily without doing them one by one. Even if the import process is saving you a lot of time, this one is going to save you even more. So let's say for example, that product sold really well for you. So what you wanna do is add more three pack underwear organizers because that's what the product was, right? So let's say this product sold well for you and you wanna start multiplying your success by adding more like that product so that you can multiply your success and get much more sales and profit this way. So once I downloaded and installed that AutoDS Chrome extension, this is what I'm going to actually use it for. So here I'm going to click on the extension right down here. Then I'm going to click on extract. While I'm on this page, which with all of these products that I wanna to add to my store. So I wanna save my time and add all of them. Now I can move on to the next page and continue clicking on extract to add more and more products. So here right now I've got 29 products. I'm gonna click on export as CSV. And now a CSV file was created with all of those products inside. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna head back to AutoDS. I'm gonna click on add products, only instead of single, I'm gonna go with multiple this time. And here I can, on the one hand, add all of their URLs or product IDs and separate it with a line break. And this way I can also, this is one way of adding more and more products, or I can click here and upload CSV. And here I can drag and drop that CSV file or click on it to open up my browser window, double click on that CSV file. And that way it'll import it really quickly to your AutoDS platform. So here I double clicked on it, processing CSV, just give it one second and file is uploaded. Once again, your supplier source. So which supplier did you use? What region is he from? Then you'll click on add as a draft. And that's how easy it is to add it to the drafts page, all of those products that we just saw in the extension. And once again, when you're done with the optimization process, once again, you click on save and import, and then it'll move to the product section of your store, which means it's live on your eBay store and anyone can search for it, view it, and purchase your product. So that's really quickly, as quick as I could have made it, regarding importing products to your stores. And this is really important for the product research phase because once you're done product researching and you have your products, then you also know how to save the most amount of time importing them. And this way you also won't spend all day and all night simply importing products to your store. So once again, guys, if you wanna learn more about product research, head to autods.com slash blog, head to autods.com slash YouTube and check out all of our YouTube videos and all of our blog articles on product research. We keep adding more and more all the time. And once again, I won't have time to go over it all in this video, 
those were my favorite methods. What are the most profitable products to sell on eBay? So this is once again concerning product research. How do you know what products are going to help you make the most amount of profit? So first you wanna go inside categories that are in demand, things that people are looking to buy. And some of the best selling categories that we found using our database is jewelry and watches, computer accessories and replacement parts, not the computers themselves, but the accessories, cell phone accessories, once again, not the cell phones themselves, but their accessories, clothing for men, women, and women's bags, health and beauty, and automotive car parts and accessories. Of course, that's not it. And once again, I don't mean the cars themselves, but their actual parts and accessories, much better for the dropshipping business model. Now, there are much, much more categories that you can dropship from, including arts, crafts, and sewing, automotive, we just talked about it, baby, beauty, personal care, cell phones, accessories, we also talked about it, clothing, computer accessories, electronics, don't sell it when you're just starting off on your eBay account because eBay doesn't like to see electronics on new sellers, but later on, you can definitely open up yourself to that because there is a lot of sales there, health and household, home and kitchen, kitchen and dining, musical instruments, which has relatively low fees, office products, patio, lawn and garden, pet supplies, sports and outdoors, tools and home improvement, toys and games. These are the best dropshipping categories. And this is what I learned from doing years of dropshipping. These will always be my favorite categories where I can always find new and trendy products, new things to sell and staying ahead of your competitors. Now, having said that, you also know what dropshipping products you need to avoid. So you can sell all those things, but there's also a whole bunch of things that you cannot sell. And in order to have a full summary of what you cannot sell, once again, I'm going to leave a link right below this video to our eBay Vero guide article that will walk you hand in hand into how you can stay here for the long term and not get into any trouble by trying to resell products that you are not allowed to resell using eBay's Vero system and our database with all of eBay's Vero keywords. So if you ever try to add a product that someone patented, that someone copyrighted, and there was no way for you to know that, when you try to add it to your AutoDS store, you'll get an error that this product is Vero because of the manufacturer or brand, and then you'll know that you need to stay away from it. On the other hand, there are products that will be considered Vero, but they're not. For example, if you try to sell a case for an iPhone, you can do that as long as the manufacturer is not Apple. But if you write in the product's title that it's an Apple iPhone case, then the customer might think that the manufacturer is Apple because that's what you called it. So you'd want to call it case for Apple iPhone. And then they know that it's for the iPhone, but not manufactured by Apple. So this is one thing that can help you clear a lot of confusion. And once again, I'm going to leave the link to that article and to the video that we have inside the article right under this video. So that will help you get started with what you cannot sell and simply avoid selling those types of products. Starting with the obvious ones like weapons, alcohol, flammable, and choking hazard materials. That's the easy stuff, but once again, use your common sense, use your common knowledge, and also use the knowledge that we are passing on to you through our blogs and videos. Your next step is to know what are the best dropshipping suppliers that you can actually work with, because here I only showed you two methods. One is using the product research feature that we have in AutoDS that's going to help you a lot. And the other was using Amazon US, which is what I showed you, but there are so many other suppliers who's counting, but we've got about 25 suppliers today that you can use here in AutoDS by simply heading to autods.com slash suppliers. Here you can see all of the suppliers that you can work with in all of their diff different regions around the world. With all of these suppliers, you have price monitoring, stock monitoring, easy product importing. So with all of them, you have an access to a reach of tens and millions of products while automating your business using all of them, all of these suppliers and all of their products. So the sky is the limit and it really depends on you and how far you wanna go using these suppliers with business automation. So what you wanna do is get to know those suppliers always work with about two to three dropshipping suppliers at the same time to not put all of your eggs in one basket. So if one supplier, for example, is giving you some problems at some time, like Chinese suppliers that simply go on Chinese holidays all of a sudden, or a US supplier that simply all of a sudden ran out of stock or cannot help you with a certain order a certain situation, you can always use other suppliers with similar or the same items to help you with that. So always work with three dropshipping suppliers. That's my favorite number. And if one supplier ever lets you down, simply switch it and replace it with a different supplier. So to simplify the product research process, here's what you need to do. One, 
Select a product or niche that you want to start to research. If you do not know, start very broad and work your way down from there. The second is to choose a reliable supplier to work with. Then you want to narrow down your product research phase by really finding out and cherry picking the best items out of the bunch with the highest potential. Then you want to simply take that product and import it to your store. Then you can start to sell it for a profit. So you know how to create your eBay account. You know how to start adding products, especially manually products from home. And once you upgrade your selling limits, you can start importing these products and start making real sales and real profit. Let's talk about selling limits before we move on to the next part. This is something that a lot of people are getting stuck on. How can I increase my selling limits? Once again, we have a full blog article and a video. Links to that, I'll leave it right under this video so, you've guys, so you guys have so many resources to turn to. And all of this is high quality, true from Dropshipper to Dropshipper full experience teaching. So take it into consideration. May get ready to learn a lot and make sure to take some breaks every now and then to refill your brain with new energies so that you can take action and succeed in this business. So selling limits, what are they? It's what eBay gives you in the beginning. So when you create a new eBay account, they can give you five or 10 listings and tell you, hey, you can only list up to 10 items, up to $500 or up to $1,000 in listings and sales at the same time. Once you reach that limit, you have to call them and tell them that you want to upgrade your limits. Now, if you're not comfortable with phone conversations, you can also do it through eBay chat. I will show you all of those methods soon, but those are the ways that you can get in contact with eBay. You can also send them an email, but I definitely, definitely recommend to go with phone call. And if you cannot, then go with a live chat. So selling limits, how does it work? eBay, once again, gives you on a new seller account, let's, let's say 10 items and $500. So if you list one item for $100, you'll have nine items left for 490 and if one sells it also catches on it also takes up those limits so where can you find them simply go to your ebay selling dashboard and in your seller's dashboard you'll have your seller's limits as you can see here in front of me and what you want to know before calling ebay or before trying to get them on chat and raising your limits there's a few prerequisites you want to make sure that you crossed out before doing it. Otherwise they'll tell you, hey, go back, take care of this, and then get back to us regarding your eBay selling limits. So the first thing you wanna make sure is that your limits are full. So for example, if they gave you this amount of limits, let's say 2000 items, well, in the beginning, you'll only get 10. So let's take a look at this example here. So here out of 10 items, you can list zero out of 10 because you already listed all 10 of your items and your item limit from 500, you got $0 left because you listed $500 in items. So you listed 10 items, $500, and that pretty much took up all of your limits. This is a good time to call eBay and let them know that you would like to increase your limits. But first, make sure that you also don't have any open return cases or unresolved buyer requests otherwise ebay will let you know hey get back to your buyers take care of them and then get back to us regarding increasing your limits you also want to make sure that your seller account is in good standing so you want to make sure that your current seller level is at least above standard and that you do not have many transaction defect defect rates you should actually always be on zero no matter how many transactions you have this is a, a, an older screenshot that i took from one of my accounts but you can see that i had 1840 transactions at this point with a 0.0, .0 transaction defect rate and no late shipment so 0.1 percent all of my tracking has been uploaded on time and valid validated or at least 95 percent which is more than enough and zero cases closed without seller resolution, which is absolutely great. I didn't need eBay's help for any of my cases. I took care of all of my customers. And this is a good sign for eBay to also increase your limits. So make sure that you're shipping your items out on time according to eBay shipping policies, that you're updating tracking information also on time according to your handling time, that you're closing cases to your favor, and also make sure that all of your items are in stock. So if you call eBay and you tell them, hey, can you please increase my 10 item limit? but they see that five products are out of stock from out of that 10, they'll tell you, well, your products are out of stock anyway. So replace them, get some sales, and then get back to us regarding increasing your limits. So make sure that your products are in stock. And of course, make sure that your account is verified. Um, we don't really have, I mean, eBay doesn't work with PayPal much anymore. So today you're working with Payoneer. So make sure that your payment accounts are online and verified. And then you can move on to increasing your eBay selling limits. How do you do it? The first way is the automatic method and it's always the best method for increasing your eBay selling limits. 
Once you start selling and you start selling well, eBay will notice that and they will automatically increase your selling limits. So you'll get an email that looks like this. Why wait? List more now. Highly run. Congratulations. You've been a great job. You've been doing a great job selling on eBay. We've noticed. Now you can sell more. So in this case, they upped me from, three, from 370 items to 710 and from a limit of 9,500 to 18,500. So about a 40, 45% increase automatically done. But if it's not done automatically, you can always request to list more. There's a, there's a button to do that right under your monthly limits that you have on your seller hub so click on that and see if that works if both of those methods didn't work then you can contact ebay by phone this is my favorite method to do it and if you want to know how to get them on the phone you can simply click on the help and contact button up on top then click on selling click on selling limits and then scroll down all the way you should have an option for ebay to get back to you or for you to call ebay if you didn't have it in that option you can play around with different options because sometimes eBay plays around with where they put their phone number in the help section but you will find it once you start to search for it so call them or have them call you and let them know hey I just started selling here I'm having a good time I'm taking care of my buyers I have much more items to sell so please increase my limits you can see that my account is in good standing they'll have a look and they'll increase your limits they may ask you questions like where you're sourcing your products from so tell them wholesale suppliers like I told you before in this video and if they're asking for any invoices or proof of purchases send them those too from wherever you bought the products from do not be afraid as soon as they're getting what they asked for they will increase your limits sometimes they don't even ask anything at all they just look at your account and they say no problem here's 100 or here's 500 so it really depends on which representative you follow up on and even if one says no you can always call them again and talk to a different representative unless you're doing it by email then they keep a track of every time you reach out to them and they'll let you know to try again in one month that's why i do not like using the email option but once again that is available in the help section on ebay and if you want to know exactly how to get to that use the link to increasing ebay limits below this video you can also contact them with chat once again, information on that below this video. And let's say you try to increase your limits and you're not eligible. So the first thing you wanna do is, well, get more sales. Once you get sales, they'll do it automatically. If you don't have any sales, then you can always try instantly by phone, which I just mentioned, or after a month by chat or mail because they keep a record. On chat, they don't always keep a record. On the mail, they usually do. And on phone, they usually never do. That's why the phone is always the best method. Once again, guys, check out the article below this video. I cannot go over it enough in this video because it's long enough as it is. So we created our eBay accounts. We conducted product research. We know what suppliers we can work with we uploaded our first items from home and we upgraded our limits now we are ready to start automation so we signed up and registered for AutoDS. we used the one dollar trial link right below this video and now we have enough time to sell make profit before we start upgrading our subscriptions on ebay to get more listings and be able to sell more and profit more in order to do that we need to know exactly what our break even is and i'm sure that you guys can agree with me here how can you calculate your profit when you're selling on eBay? That is the next part that I want to talk about, and this part is really important. Now, in order to calculate your fees correctly, you have to be aware of all of the fees and all of the subscriptions that you're paying for when you're running your eBay dropshipping business. So number one are your eBay store fees. Then you have the category fees, which I will go over soon. Then you've got your final value fees, your payment processor fees, your promotion fees, and of course your buy and sell price. So those are all of your expenses. And besides that, you have whatever the buyer is paying you. So how can we go over this really easily? First, we've got the AutoDS eBay fee calculator. And once again, it's absolutely free. You have a link to it in the blog article for how to dropship on ebay once again below this video and when you click on that you'll be taken to this page the ebay fees calculator so here this is going to help you out really easily find out what price you need to sell for in order to make a certain amount of profit and still stay competitive and in the game so what you want to do here is fill in all of the right information before we get to that let's get to know what each fee means so first you've got the ebay store fee which we will get to right here so the store fee is whatever you're paying eBay 
just to have a store on their platform. Now, when you start a new account, you have a free account and you get free listings. So what you wanna do is use that free account and use the free listings on that account to import trending products. And only when they start to sell and you start to make a profit, you're going to use that profit to upgrade your subscription to the next one where you can have more listings, add more products, sell more, profit more. But if you are not making sales on your free account with the free listings that you have from a free account, I do not suggest upgrading to your next account until you learn what starts to sell and you're actually using your profit to expand and not spending your own money from your bank account. So as you can see here, eBay has a few different types of stores. They have a starter store, basic, premium, anchor, and enterprise. And the starter is the cheapest starting at $7.95 for a monthly renewal or $4.95 for the annual yearly renewal. But you also have the zero insertion fee listings that I just talked about, which means when you create a new seller account, eBay is gonna give you a fresh free start for up to 250 free listings when you create a managed payments account, when you connect to eBay's managed payments. If you do not connect to eBay's managed payments, then you'll have 200 free listings, which is still more than enough to get the ball rolling, see what products start to sell, and then use your profit to upgrade yourself to a starter store package where, well, in this case, you'll still get 250, so there's no point in that. They're pretty much giving you that for free today, but these are always changing. So be sure to always check every month how many free listings eBay is giving you. So your first expense will be the basic store package, which gives you up to a thousand fixed price listings, which is once again, way more than enough to start making some great profits and from there continue to the premium up to 10,000 and here you'll start to make some real significant profits. So you need to work your way up slowly. Now remember, you have your eBay selling limits that's different than the store package that we're seeing here. The selling limits is how much eBay allows you to list and the store package is how much you can list if your limits allow you to do so. So if you only have 10 item limits and you have the no store package of 250 listings, you'll still be limited to only 10. So make sure to upgrade your limits using the exact steps that I showed you in this video. And step by step, you will find the winning formula to also upgrade your limits and make sure that you are upgrading your store subscription when you have sales and profit. Now, if you have 250 listings and they're not selling, don't upgrade to a basic store. You're doing something wrong with your product research. You're not selling the right products or maybe not to the right audience. Maybe it's your product optimization. Go back, see what you're doing wrong, and do not upgrade your store until you start selling and making profit. This way, once again, you'll always be using your profits to expand and not your money from your actual bank account. So you succeed and you grow as you grow along. So that's regarding the eBay store subscriptions and when you should upgrade to the next store subscription. So let's say you wanna add a product and you wanna know exactly how much you should price it and how much profit you're actually going to make from it. So first you've got your category. So choose whatever category this product belongs to. If it doesn't belong to any of the categories that you see here, simply leave it on other categories. Then you've got your payment processor. So either you're managing your payments through eBay or you're using PayPal. It's one or the, it's one or the other. So choose whatever is right. Then your eBay account options. So do you have a store subscription? Are you a top rated seller? And are you an international seller? All of these fields will affect your final break even. Then you've got your selling price. So how much you wanna sell this product for? So let's say I wanna sell a dog collar for $19.99 and I'm buying it for $8.99. Let's say I don't have a shipping price and I'm not charging my buyers for shipping and I'm not running any promotions on this product so I'm not paying any promotion fees. So in this case, my total fees are $2.65 and my total profit is $8.35, which, which is almost 42%. And that is great. Here I have a nice little pie chart showing how much I'm profiting, my expenses, and my fees. So this will help you understand exactly how much you're going to profit. And this is as close as you can make it. Just take one thing into consideration. Your product price, you're probably going to get charged for tax on your supplier's website. So always add another 10%. So let's say it's $9, 9% is 90 cents. So in this case, I'd say that my product cost is $9 and 90 cents. So once again, this is gonna help you understand exactly what your break even is. So in this case, my fees 
are 13.3%, so that's pretty much my break even. On Auto DS, I'll set my break even to be 13.3%, and I'll add another 40% profit, and then it'll sell for $19.99 or $20.99, and that's fine by me. So that's how you'll know that you'll always be in the profit zone and never losing money. Now, speaking of profit, do not be afraid to profit, guys. In dropshipping, you do not need to sell at 10-15% profit margins, and you'll always be able to sell for more. For example, 20%, 30%. I personally sell for anywhere between 35 to 50 percent that is how i like to sell i know that it works i know that it sells and it's bringing me some great profit along the way so that's how i like to profit i remember that in the beginning i used to sell for 30 cents 50 cents as long as i'm making sales but sooner or later i found out that that isn't the right strategy that's not the right way to play this game your buyers are not going to know where the packages are coming from even if you're selling on ebay and they're getting uh, a product a gift wrap from Amazon, they most likely won't care. 99.9% .9 of the buyers will not care. And if you guys have tried this business model before, you know exactly what I mean. So they don't care where the product is coming from and they won't even care to know that they could have bought it for cheaper somewhere else. Most buyers don't even do this research. When you buy a product online, it gets delivered to your door. You don't start looking for other places where you might buy this product for a cheaper price. You got the product, you got what you paid for and you're happy about it. Same thing goes for your buyers. So use our eBay fees calculator to understand exactly how much you're paying, how much you're going to profit, and how much fees you're paying so you'll know exactly what you are making at the end of the day. The next step is to import your products using dropshipping automation, which I already showed you in this video, so I can skip it using the blog article below. But this is pretty much what we did. We found hot products to sell, we imported them to our store, and then once you do that, you'll start getting orders. So the next thing that you want to talk about is order fulfillment. How do you fulfill your orders and how do you do it fast and easy? So the long way to do it is to go to your orders page and to click on your order, see what the buyer bought and click on the source URL to go to the supplier's website, add the product to your cart and ship it to the buyer using the buyer's shipping details. Now, once you make a lot of sales, this is going to be really difficult, especially when you're trying to scale on 20, 30, 50 plus sales per day. You'll spend all day just writing down your buyer's information on your supplier's websites. You may mix a few things up. You may ship to the wrong places. You may choose the wrong payment details and you'll have so many accounts and so many supplier's websites. It could make things a little bit overwhelming and that is fine. That's also why we have the automated order solution. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. On the AutoDS platform, we're going to click on orders and here we can see all of the orders that we got from our buyers. Now on the one hand, as I mentioned, you can simply click on the buy ID right here and this will take you to the supplier's website for this product and you can simply add it to your cart and ship it to your buyer using the order details that you have once you click on the order. Here is the buyer's details. So you're going to copy this information and you're going to paste it on your supplier's website, buy the product, ship it to this address, and then fill in the order information right here. The buy order ID, the tracking number once you get it, and you'll change the status to ordered and shipped accordingly. But like I said, once, you, once you'll want to scale, this will become a problem because it'll take up pretty much all of your day. So what you wanna do is enable automatic orders. So first things first, head over to settings and on plans and add-ons, you wanna make sure that you're adding the orders processor like you can see right here. Once that is enabled, go to your store settings on AutoDS and click on your supplier and your store. So for example, my eBay USA store with Amazon US, I'm going to click on orders and here I wanna process orders using the fulfilled by AutoDS service. If I also click in automatic orders, it'll automatically fulfill each order as soon as it comes in. And if you don't click in automatic orders, then the order will come in in pending status and you'll have to manually switch it to send to auto order and it will automate the order processing for you. Let me show you what I mean. So let's go back to the order screen. Here I have them in pending, so I can manually send them to auto order. Then the system will process the order automatically using one auto order credit. Here I've got 2,530. You can always buy more credits by clicking on buy credits, and you can buy credits using PayPal or Payoneer, whatever's comfortable for you. And you can also load your manage balance right here. 
So the balance is used to actually pay for these orders. So if the product costs $10 on your supplier's website, then $10 will be deducted from your balance to issue out that order. Now, once the order will be processed automatically, you'll also have the order ID processed automatically inside your order details. And once the order is shipped, AutoDS will once again update the tracking number on AutoDS and also on your eBay store at the same time and change the status from order to shipped. Once it gets delivered to your buyer, the status will automatically switch from shipped to delivered. And you can always start a return on any one of your orders by simply clicking on request return. And if your product is in its return window from your supplier, if your supplier allows it, then AutoDS will automatically attach a return label as you can see right here, download return label, send that return label to your buyer. And as soon as it comes back, as soon as it ships back to its returning warehouse using the provided return label, then you'll get an automatic refund to your balance. And you can simply use that balance to process more orders. Real easy to process your orders and you don't have to worry about getting your accounts locked on Amazon or any other supplier's website. Everything is managed for you automatically, including your orders, including your returns, including tracking numbers. And tracking numbers is something that I have to talk about right now. If you guys haven't heard about eBay's item location policy, eBay wants you to ship out your products using the item location policy, using the right zip code that I showed you guys in the settings. If you don't do that, they'll flag your eBay account and you will be able to sell, but you'll make less traffic and less sales because they're simply demoting your listings and your store for not following their item location policy. But now we have a fix for that using the automated orders. So once you enabled automated orders, what you wanna do is click on settings, make sure that the right store and the right supplier, in this case, it has to be Amazon because this is how they flag your accounts using Amazon tracking numbers with a zip code that's not coming out from what your default zip code is. Make sure that the default item country is the right country. If you're shipping from the US, don't choose China, choose US. So United States, the zip code can be any zip code from within the United States. And then what you want to do is click here on orders and the tracking conversion. You want to click on convert all tracking numbers to Aqualine with zip code masquerade. What this will do is every time you get a tracking and AutoDS automatically updates your tracking information, it'll update it automatically to Aqualine tracking using the zip code provided here. So eBay will see that the tracking number is actually coming out from the zip code that you have in your default zip code. And then they'll see that you're not breaching their item location policy and they won't flag your account. If they already flagged your account and now you're using the Aqualine tracking numbers, then simply reach out to eBay, let them know that you're not breaching their item location policy. They'll have a quick check and they'll unflag your account. So make sure to use Aquiline tracking conversions when dropshipping from Amazon to eBay. This will simply help you get so much more traffic and sales. So I highly recommend to use the Fulfilled by AutoDS service to automate your orders, automate your tracking numbers, and also use Aquiline tracking conversions to help you with your item location policy and this way you'll never get flagged and you'll always get more sales. Now let's talk about customer service. This is one of the things that if you really want to stay here for the long term and you want to do this for a few years looking forward and even more, you have to take care of your buyers. The people who are buying from your eBay store is eBay's product. eBay wants to take care of their product and it's your responsibility to do so. So make sure that you're always answering all of your buyer's messages, that you're responding to all of their cases. If they open an item not received case, show a tracking number that shows that it did arrive to them. If they're saying that the product is damaged or, or doesn't work or defective, give them a return label using AutoDS is fulfilled by AutoDS service. You can get a return label really, really quickly or simply reach out to your supplier if you took out the order manually and let them know that you need a return label. In any case, you have to answer all of your buyer's messages and never leave any case unattended. Make sure that you're replying quickly to everything. One way to do that easily, especially when you're running multiple eBay stores is using AutoDS's customer service feature. So as you can see here, I'm back in the system. I'm going to click here on customer support and here you can see see all of the messages that you're getting from eBay, from eBay's buyers and so forth. So here you have the message and I can click on any message and there I can continue replying. This is a, a message to eBay, so you cannot reply to eBay. But if I click on a message that I got from a buyer like this one, 
So the buyer replied something to me and I can continue replying from inside this field right here. Then you're applying from what looks like a chat field, a chat window between you and the buyer. And of course, this will send him the message on eBay and it'll simply make everything much, much easier, especially when you're running multiple stores and you're getting multiple messages to those multiple stores. You'll see them all under one screen. You can even save snippets. And this is especially good if you're used to pasting uh, uh, messages, uh, template messages. So messages that are repetitive, you can simply save the snippet and use that over and over. And all of this simply makes your customer service much easier to handle when dropshipping on eBay. So now that we're nearing the end of the video, let's go over the things that we talked about and then I'll add a small little bonus lesson of how to get more sales. So we talked about product research, how to find the best products to sell on your eBay store. And remember guys, it's all about testing. If you're in the beginning of your journey, you have a lot of hours hours to put down on product research, but the more you work on it, the more you test it, the faster you'll see the results and the faster you'll be able to scale from there and start making more profits. We also talked about customer satisfaction, process your orders as soon as they come in without any delay, take care of your buyer's messages, take care of your open cases. Don't let eBay intervene with the problems between, between you and the buyer. Show them that you have the responsibility and that you know how to take care of their buyers. Then we talked about using multiple suppliers. So all of the suppliers that we have, you guys have an access to over 25 suppliers, tens and millions of products. You'll never run out of anything to sell. The only thing you will run out of is time. And that is why we have business automation so that you can scale and really profit in big numbers. Now, instead of going over all the things that we went over, I wanna give you guys a small bonus lesson because this video pretty much went over everything, but there is always more things and more things that you can add. Guys, this is how you can make more sales when drop shipping on eBay. I'm gonna head over to my eBay dashboard and what I wanna do there is go to the marketing section and use promoted listings. The reason I want promoted listings is that it's going to help me make more sales, get more traffic to my store and at the end of the day, make more profit. So here I'm going to click on marketing and advertising dashboard and here I've got promoted listing standard and promoted listings advanced. The difference between standard and advanced is both ways eBay is going to sponsor our listings so that more buyers will see them. In standard, we will pay eBay a set percentage from our final price on eBay only if and after we make a sell from someone who clicked on our promoted listing. And you have the advanced, which is eBay PPC pay per click, where you're paying eBay every time someone clicks on your ad, which means you can have more expenses, but they can actually scale you much, much better this way. This is a new feature. We have a video on it, eBay PPC, uh, and also an article coming up. So I'll leave the link to the video right below this video if you guys want to learn about PPC. But promoted listing standard is much easier to learn. So let me show you really quick in this video. Here you have some of my statistics. So as you can see, everything is pretty much going up ever since I started uh, my new promoted listings campaign. Uh, and this is the graph showing you the organic on top and the promoted on the bottom. And what you want to do is create a new campaign. Then they're asking if you want to create a standard, which is what I showed you, giving them a set percentage only after you make a sale or the advanced PPC paying for every click. You're not there yet. In the beginning of your journey, start with the standard. So if you don't make any sales, you won't have to pay eBay anything. Give your campaign a name and let it continue on unless you want to give it an end date. Then what you want to do is go to all of your categories, grab all of your products in this, in this campaign, but here you want to apply a single ad rate. Don't let eBay suggest your rate because they can take like 25%. So if you're profiting 25%, then you'll actually lose money because you won't make any profit this way. So you want to apply a single ad rate, start with one. Then after a week, move up to two or create a new campaign on two, three. And I usually like playing between one to five. See what works well for you. And if you make enough sales, even with one to 2%, then eBay will only take one to 2% from your total buy price. So if you sell a product that costs hundred dollars on eBay and you only gave them 1%, then you're only giving eBay $1 and you're profiting 20, $30 depends on your profit margin. But this definitely pays off when you get the numbers right. So here, for example, start with 1%. And then eBay will simply promote all of your listings and you will pay eBay 1% every time you make sales 
when someone clicks and buys your product. Now, the higher you give them, the better visibility they'll give you in the promoted listings. But as I said, start low and work your way up from there. This is one of the best ways to get quick sales right off the start, right off the bat. Now, there are so much more tips and so many more things that I can teach you guys, but this video went on way longer than it should have. So start asking me your questions right below this video so that I can work on my next one for you guys. Let me know what works for you, what's not working for you. And once again, guys, subscribe to our YouTube channel to always stay updated and always learn on what's hot in dropshipping and e-commerce in general. Best of luck with your eBay dropshipping business. Remember, work with multiple suppliers. Check out different eBay regions. Don't only sell under one region. Try different multiple regions. And I assure you guys, with the right amount of product research and the right customer service, you will make it in the game of dropshipping and you will be able to turn it from a part-time job to a full-time job if that's what you're interested in and don't forget to check out our youtube channel where i interviewed other dropshippers and ebay dropshippers who are really making big numbers dropshipping on ebay so you can use that for inspiration too and once again guys whatever you want to learn and i didn't teach in this video let me know below and i will not only answer you guys there but also create content for you guys so that you can become an expert in whatever field you're having trouble with. Good luck once again on eBay dropshipping and I'll see you in the future videos.